Hello and welcome. Today I want to explore the topic of the contrast between polyvagal theory and the traditional view of the nervous system. And now those of you that are new to polyvagal theory might wonder, why should I care about polyvagal theory? What's the difference? And I hope to show you that today. And this is important to me because it was through polyvagal theory, me discovering it four years ago, that transformed my own health and the health of my clients that I am helping to get out of chronic pain. Let me show you how that looks. And, and it, I want to kind of contrast the two. So you may ask, and you know, what's the difference? Well, let me show you. In the traditional view, health issues are treated by looking at body systems separately. Uh, I actually even remember as a teenager, one of my best friends was told by the dermatologist that there was absolutely no connection between what he ate and his acne, which at the time, he, I was 15, I thought was absolutely ridiculous because I, I noticed every time he ate junk food, he'd get acne. And when he didn't eat junk food, he didn't get acne. Interesting. So polyvagal theory sees this very differently. It sees that there's no difference between mental and physical illness. Our body systems are all connected and therefore you have to con you know, consider the different influences of the different systems. And basically symptoms are always related in some way in an integrative view of, this, of the nervous system. Now here's a real doozy. Our actions are the result of conscious decisions. That's what the traditional view, view sees most of the time. Polyvagal sees it, the polar opposite. Most of our actions are the result of ancient systems in our body that are designed to help us survive and they operate automatically most of the time. So most of your decisions are not made consciously, they're made by your subconscious. Now here's the other one. If you wanna change a behavior, you have to change your thoughts. I'm sure you've heard that your whole life. Polyvagal doesn't agree with that. If you wanna change a behavior, you must learn to pay attention and understand your body sensations. And through your body sensations, you'll understand where your nervous system is kind of tuned to, and you'll be able to switch that if you learn how to work within the polyvagal uh, framework. And then trauma, this is a big one too, is considered by the traditional view to be caused by specific events. And the real hook here is that if you do not have an experience that falls under this category of events that are kind of considered reasonable reasons to be traumatized, basically, so it had to be rape, war, or some sort of adverse experience in your childhood. If you don't have one of those on the list, then they ignore you and say, you don't, you're not traumatized because you didn't have an, you know, an event that proved that you could be. Polyvagal is much different. It sees trauma as caused by a lack of resources, both internally and externally, and that responses to events is very individually determined. So what could be a total trauma to one person would be completely benign to someone else. Uh, it could be as something as simple as heights or going into an elevator. Some people have a phobia about elevators. So I do not consider elevators dangerous, but someone else might feel that way. Okay, and then, uh, in the traditional view, addictions are the result of negative thinking and moral weakness. The polyvagal view sees addiction as an attempt to self-regulate and that the person will stop using the drug when they gain the ability through more resources to not need it. Um, that's a big difference. Uh, depression is the result of negative thoughts. Polyvagal sees it differently. Depression is the result of a nervous system that can't find states of safety and is perpetually stuck in states of defense or attack. Actually, I'm sorry, for depression, it'd be stuck in states of defense. Um, depression is treated by talk therapy and medication. Polyvagal view is depression is treated by practices that build up the individual's capacity to feel safe with themselves, with other people, and in their environment. Now, here's a biggie. 
When you visit your doctor in the traditional view, your personal or they call subjective observations and experiences have little value, if usually none, by the way, that only tests and scans can determine what's going on with your health. In polyvagal view, your personal subjective observations and your body sensations, thoughts, and emotions are actually one of the most important tools in diagnosing and treating someone's at least a stress-related disorder. Uh, also, doctors should not be emotionally connected to their patients. In the polyvagal view, the quality of the social connection between the patient and doctor is a big predictor of health outcomes. Dr. Porges states, the way he sees it through his research is that up to 50% of, uh, of why someone gets well in a doctor's or practitioner's office is the quality of connection between the, the um, practitioner and the patient. That's a big number, 50. Um, and also uh, the traditional view sees children who misbehave in school, or you might even say have trouble learning in school, do so because they haven't been taught to control themselves. And in the polyvagal view, the only reason children misbehave in school is because they don't feel safe. It's may, very likely they don't feel safe at home either if they're misbehaving in, at school. And when they're helped to find safety in that situation, they will be automatically cooperative. You don't have to make them cooperate. All right, so that, that's the overview. And I would love to hear your comments and questions about this. And um, keep in mind that you know if, if I find your question especially relevant to the issue, I may create another video to answer it or to expand on that question. I really appreciate any sort of thoughts that you have. And I hope that was helpful. And I hope to see you again. Thank you.